I'm Patrick Davidson. Recently, CAPS Media collaborated with the Museum of Ventura County on a remarkable exhibit called InnoVision, Ventura County Artists to Watch. For the engaging exhibition, CAPS recorded interviews with nine outstanding artists in the county. Short segments from the interviews are included in the exhibition on display at the museum. For recaps, we're sharing the more complete interviews, where the artists share their personal stories and artistic vision. In this edition of Recaps, the featured InnoVision artist is Jasmine Delgado. What do you do? I'm a professor, I'm an artist, printmaker, <laughs> quilter, <laughs> um, yeah. What do you, how do you, of those things, what do you prioritize? What's the most important to you? It depends on it, art, for sure, but I think as a professor, I feel like I'm always in the back of my head thinking about my students. So it's just, it's just innate, I think, in me. So sometimes they're hand in hand. Like, I, when I think about my, what, my work, Sometimes I'm thinking about like how I can turn this into a project for my students. <laughs> so I feel like for me, I they're I don't know they sort of work in tandem together. Like they learn from me, I learn from them. Like I make discoveries, and then it sort of translates into things I do in the classroom. So I mean, primarily, I think I'm an artist first. But okay, that is second. <laughs> Trust me. What's the biggest challenge teaching students? Oh gosh, I think letting them trust the process and take risks. It's amazing how risk averse students are. They're so afraid to like make mistakes. And I'm like, that's where you find stuff out. Like <laughs> that's like you wanna make mistakes. So I think once they get past that and they realize like nothing terrible is gonna happen if they make a mistake, then all of a sudden like discovery happens. So I think that's the hardest for sure. Really good off. Yeah. <laughs> You're lucky. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Where did you come from and where did you grow up and so on? Sure. So I was born and raised in the San Fernando Valley, um, right around Reseda Northridge, kind of in the middle of the San Fernando Valley. Um, raised from a single mother, didn't have a car until I was 30. My mom never had a car, so I spent most of my days like on public transportation. And um yeah, <laughs> that's kind of where it started, I guess. School? School. So um, for my undergrad, I went to Cal State Long Beach. with uh, I got my BFA in printmaking. And then for my graduate degree, I got an MFA in studio art at um, UC Santa Barbara. It strikes me as a, as a child of a single parent. Mm -hmm. what did she, how did she react to this art thing that you wanted to do? You know, it's really interesting. And I think that um, as... Uh, Latina, like my mom was Mexican, came here when she was in her 30s. And I think the assumption was that she would want me to just not do something that, you know, would be sort of risky, I guess. But she was always really supportive since I was really young. Like I was drawing and she was loved everything I did. She was super supportive of me going to art school. Like, uh, yeah, so I feel like I was really fortunate in that sense that there was, you know, everything I did was amazing. And she was really happy to to support that, you know, as she could. So, yeah. And then she was really happy when I became a professor. Okay. So. <laughs> you must have been just bursting with pride. Oh, yeah. What called you? Why art? How did, how did that happen? I don't remember it ever not happening, if that makes sense. Like, I was drawing since I was a little kid. Like, you know, I remember, like, I'm going to cry a little bit. Sorry. I talk about my mom, but... Um, she would buy me like books, like, and I would always draw with the books. Sorry, she passed <laughs> recently, so I will. Let me collect myself. Sorry. Yeah, I think since I was very young, I was always drawing. She'd buy me books. I drew out was in the books, <laughs> so I was never like I was never not drawing when I was little. Like I was sketching when I was in school. Teacher was a comment because I was always drawing cartoons like on the side of my notes. Like um, so, yeah. I think it just it was always something that I knew in some capacity. I wanted to be an artist. It was never like there was never another option, you know. But I wanted to teach too, so I knew that it's fairly early on as well. Yeah. You do obviously a lot of different forms of art. Can you describe some of the things you do? Sure. Um, I, you know, <laughs> so I primarily I kind of describe myself as I don't know, like a, a printmaker who 
fundamentally I'm a printmaker. So a lot of my processes, whether I'm working in fabric or traditional print, like comes from that sort of foundation of printmaking. So working um, in kind of process heavy mediums that come the, from the foundation of having like a repeatable matrix. There's something really interesting to me about having a repeatable matrix. So whether I'm carving out of linoleum or I'm making a screen printed stencil, like I love the process, but then I also love like the flexibility of the medium. So I tend to, as you kind of maybe noticed when you were walking around, like, <laughs> You know, I've got quilted works, I've, you know, traditional printed works, I also have collaged printed works, and so I just find that, um, I don't know, I, at the core I think I'm a printmaker, that's how I view, like, my process, but I'm also really excited to experiment with different substrates, <laughs> whether it's soft fabric, or it's cardboard, or traditional paper, or, you know, so I think that's sort of my foundation, and that's how I sort of, I don't know, when I push work, that's how it is, yeah. It's a big, it's a big guy here. How do you decide what medium to use? It depends on the idea. <laughs> so, and I think part of it too is because I do, um, I feel like there's always something going on up here. And so sometimes it's like a sign, like, and I just know, like, I, this is the sign I want to do right now. And it has to be quilted. Other times it's, um, you know, it's a cityscape and I see it in black and white and I feel like it needs to be in black and white. So I think for me, it just depends on the idea. And then I sort of evolve from there. Sometimes it doesn't work and I'm like, I abandon it. I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> like, I'll just move on. Like, um, I was telling Carlos that I, you know, I have these little drawings and I really wanted to start making some quilts of like, just weird, like, detritus like you know like birds but also detritus and it may not manifest into anything <laughs> but I feel like I got sort of obsessed with trying to figure out if I could do that and how they would kind of live in relationship to like the quilted work so um yeah <laughs> and what are you doing for the exhibit um so for the exhibit um Carlos came in my studio and um I showed him my quilted works and he was really interested in the sign pieces that I was doing. And so I'm showing um, four or five of the uh, logo signs, I sort of call them, ones that are a little bit more ubiquitous, you know, 7-Eleven sign, a 76 sign. And then I have two large quilts that are based on very specific landmarks in the San Fernando Valley. Um, they're super dense. They're um, where these are much cleaner. They're more graphic. They're very recognizable. The two large quilts are because they're very specific and very detailed. There's tons of embroidery and sort of um, lots of kind of patchwork applique. So they're really dense. So I'm, I like the idea of showing those two in relationship to like the sort of cleaner big sign. So I'm I have about six works planned. I don't know until I hang what it's actually going to look like because it's sort of a funky space right in the beginning <laughs> when you walk in. So um, we'll see. <laughs> I've seen a little bit of this. When you do the, like the, like the what I would call the mural, like the San Fernando. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that from memory or do you go to your pick? What's the process? So it's usually from... It's, it's, memory is usually what sparks the idea for me to want to go, but I usually try to go and I'll take photographs. Sunday early, early morning is my key. <laughs> like that's when I go. Um, I'll go super early Sunday morning. There's not a soul on the streets at like 6 a.m. Um, so I'll take photographs. And there's occasions too when I have to go to like Google. Like sometimes I'll take photographs just to for research and then I go home and I'm like oh, I didn't get the thing that I wanted so I'll have to go into Google Maps and like try to see if I can like you know get a slightly different angle or um so most of it comes from my own source photography but spurred from like a memory um yeah or sometimes I'll just go visit and I like I won't I'll just drive down a street and I'm visiting a friend and I'm like oh I forgot about that you know and I'll that will be something that I'll either take a picture of and think about to revisit later why this as opposed to that? What leaps out at you when you bring it in? Sometimes, a lot of times it's personal. It's um, something I have a relationship to. Like either it's a place that, you know, I went to with friends. It's a place that's like on a intersection that's significant for some reason. Sometimes it's just I, I love the graphic quality of the sign. 
So like the Wiener Central sign was one of those where um, I'm just struck by the, you know, the forms of the letters and like the simplicity of a logo and the color. Um, so sometimes it's purely visual, sometimes it's memory. Um, yeah, it's kind of both of those things. Why quilts? Why you, the use of quilts? <laughs> you snuck in there with your, your question. Um, so quilts, so it was interesting. The quilts kind of happened purely accidentally, and this is kind of going back to how I teach my students. Uh, because I was a printmaker, I had been screen printing at a stencil of a sign from San Fernando, and I was printing it on t-shirts, and then I had all this scrap fabric, and so I'm like, I'm just gonna print it on fabric. So I printed like just tons of the scrap fabric, and I just laid it out on the table, and I was like, and I just started cutting it, cutting it up like cutting it up, trying to follow the sign and then like reapplicating it back together. And all of a sudden I finished and I was like, okay, something happened here <laughs> that like made sense because I felt like there was something about the tangibility and the softness and the comfort from the fabric that was really satisfying to me. Cause like, that's how I feel about signs. Like they bring this, like, I don't know, a memory that's, that's really positive And I love them so much. I always joke that I wanted to like make work. I could like wrap myself up in <laughs> like cozy. So that's kind of how the, the fabric sort of started. And then it just kind of evolved from there. So you're still discovering all the time all the time <laughs> you know like the the first quilts that i was doing were very um they were less refined to some degree and they were um i don't know i was sort of i was treating them very similarly to how i was treating my black and white sort of collaged work and i think i it was sort of working but then i started to kind of refine the process a little bit and then i was like oh so now i know that this approach works for this, right? But then the really clean, very structured quilted approach works for like the sign, <laughs> you know, in a certain way. Cause I don't want to like obscure like the beauty of the sign with a lot of extraneous like doodads and patchwork. And, you know, so yeah. What do you want people who visit the show, the, the exhibit? What do you want? How do you want them to react? Um, I want them to feel um a connection like oh like i know that sign and i think that's one of the things that carlos and i talked about because a lot of my work stem is very sort of region specific it stems from the san fernando valley well how does it fit here so i wanted to choose work that you know or pieces that were more like i said ubiquitous so like a 7-eleven sign someone would have a connection to right or the tommy sign you know there's a tommy's right off the one <laughs> you know so i want people when they walk in to feel a sense of you know like a connection just visually to the work and um yeah and just um i don't know i think maybe hopefully feel um, I don't know, maybe look at signs differently too, because I feel sometimes they're just in the background, but they really are kind of like, I don't know, they're sort of the language of a city to some degree. So I, I want people to maybe pay more attention to what they might just be kind of walking past or might just exist behind them. I have a question. <laughs> uh, uh, so San Fernando Valley, the landscape is very different than the place you live now. Yes. So how does that change affect the work you do and affect you personally? That's a really interesting question because I had a really hard time when I first moved here to like kind of acclimate. Um, so when I first, when my husband and I first moved here, it was because I got the job. So we moved here and I remember like, one of the first things I joked about to my husband, we were driving around like looking for places to eat or go hang out. I was like, there's not like, like, there's no, like, where's the 7-Eleven? Like, I remember making that comment. Like, I, I couldn't understand, like, like, the landscape was so different to me. So it's, that's been like a shift, I think. And there's been really great things about living here. It's quieter, it's, you know, it's more sparse and it's beautiful, obviously, outside. And I think in terms of my work, it almost makes me, <laughs> I don't know, it makes me more so want to, like, keep continuing to, like, look back to where I came from and then also maybe in the future connect to where I am now. So I feel like I'm still in the valley, like I'm still there, right? Like I still like, I feel like I could be doing that work for a long time, but then I also feel like 
doing some work because Ventura is really cool. <laughs> like downtown Ventura has like really cool old vintage like hotel signs and restaurant signs that I'm really visually interested in. So I see at some point maybe making that leap when I feel like I'm fully like I'm here, like I'm grounded, I'm connected. Like I feel like I'm still kind of working to get there right now, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Do you see a lot of spaces like the ones that you like you represent in your work from San Fernando Valley? Do you see a lot of spaces like this in Ventura County? I do. So that's actually like a really good question because one of the, I think the first cities that I felt an affinity for here was Oxnard because it's so similar to a lot of the places that I grew up, like Pacoima and Arlita and San Fernando. So I felt like, oh, that was the first place that I felt like, oh, this is more comforting to me because I understand <laughs> it's a little bit better. Um, and I feel like there's very similarities and, you know, uh, sort of the layering of signage and like, you know, the, the laundromat, the meat market, like there's a lot of like through line there, like connections there that I'm interested in that, that that was the one place that I felt like, okay, that might be the next place <laughs> I connect to and explore. You see the world very differently. It strikes oh. me. I mean, people drive down the street all the time. They don't see the signage and the, and the interplay and all that. It's fascinating. Thanks. I think, you know, I think that stemmed honestly from when I was a kid, like riding on the bus, like all I did was look out the window. Like, you know, I was like either a pedestrian or we were looking at, I was looking out the window and I was always struck by signage, you know? And so I think like really early on, I developed this appreciation for signage. And on top of that, there's also connection just in terms of nostalgia to what those signs mean. But um, yeah. And my husband made a really funny comment. We were driving around we were in the valley and there was a truck part and it had like it was like a homemade sign on the back of this truck for a tire store so it was like I mean there were like eight different lines of text and it was like a hand-drawn wheel like a tire and it said tires and sale and it was like loud and weird and I was like I like, like made him stop the car. I'm like, stop the car, stop the car. Just take a picture of this thing. And he was like, I don't get it. Like, I don't understand. And I'm like, it's beautiful. Like, it's like someone like thought to make this amazing object to like get people to come to their store. Like, I think that's, I don't know. I'm just really drawn to like text and I don't know, signage. And there's something about that that is really interesting to me. Yeah. I don't know. And then you get to express it as art. Yeah, then there's like that other layer of then there's an, a reinterpretation of that, you know, yeah, which there's some, you know, changes that happen, I guess, in that respect, too. So, yeah. Wow. What about all the threads? What's going on? Well, the threads are like my, I guess, my drawing material, <laughs> you know. Um, so, obviously, because I do a lot of quilts um, and I'm depending on the type of quilt that I'm doing, um, you know, obviously I need color and thread to match. So, um, you know, it's like having your colored pencils or your paints or your markers. Like, um, so I, you know, if I need to switch out a color because I'm doing something, there it is. <laughs> no, I wanted to know of the quilts too, like the patterns of the quilts. How, how does the materials you use inform the work? Um, in a lot of ways, I think that, you know, when I'm thinking about like a particular sign, um, I mean, you can see I have a large collection of color and I'm continually collecting people give me fabric all the time. Um, and I think that um, sometimes I'll see a particular pattern or color um, and depending on whatever the thing that I'm working on, right? So sometimes I'm like, okay, like, there was this really cool, like, I don't know, sort of watermelony color. And I, you know, that was something that I, there was a weird, one of the pieces that I did this in the show, which is a large kind of building structure with a lot of different signs. And there was a particular color in that sign that didn't, that wasn't present. And then I found the fabric and I was super excited. About it. So sometimes the fabric kind of speaks to me. Sometimes I search for the fabric. So there might be times when I need a specific color and I have to find it. Or sometimes I print the fabric myself. So like this quilt, which I'm sorry, it's all hidden, but all, all of the, all of the background of this quilt is all print screen printed. So um, I started kind of incorporating more making my own patterns and actually altering fabric to then get what I really needed out of it because I couldn't always find it. Do you 
work on assignment? I mean, do you get commissions or is it all self-motivated? Every once in a while it's a commission. Um, I had a commission from LA Metro. Um, uh, but normally it's uh, it's all self-driven. <laughs> it's just by either something sparks my interest um, or sometimes I might work in um, a specific area. So like this sign is from a, a specific intersection and right across the street from it is a giant Arby sign. And that's like my next sign. <laughs> so they're going to sort of live <laughs> like in a relationship to, to each other. Sometimes it's just a one off. But sometimes there is an actual sort of connection, like geographically, that kind of drives where I'm going. Could, could you just explain, uh, Patrick, what creativity means to you? Creativity, that's an interesting question. So I feel like, I don't know, creativity can come in so many forms and anyone can be creative. I think as it's if you're searching for answers to questions that maybe haven't been answered yet or in different ways, I, you know, I think when you're thinking creatively, you're trying to find solutions to problems. You're making mistakes, taking risks, you're trying new things um, to eventually come to a solution. So I think creative people just naturally are trying to solve questions and, or solve problems, answer questions in different ways. And they're just throwing everything sometimes at the wall to see what sticks. <laughs> and then when it sticks, it's like, okay, I've made a discovery. I have some questions for you that I want to read and they're going to inform also the, the conversation. Yeah, this is okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and I have one, oh. you know, one of the people who I work for a guy named Harry Marks, who was one of the people who started the TED Talks. Oh, okay. And, and he was a graphic guy in L and L they were over at ABC. Oh. And I spent two hours looking at a building in New York <laughs> and just looked at all the sign up. And I'd never viewed anything. And that's how you do it. That's, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. I tend to look at those signs first. I think. Yeah, I'm interested. I don't know. Maybe it's because he has a background as, as a graphic designer, and I'm really interested. I'm by trade and in practice. I'm not a graphic designer, although I've done some. But I'm very interested in design. I love mid-century design. I love you know Saul Bass, who I discovered actually designed the Wiener Schnitzel. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> logo which is yeah. amazing so yeah so i think that informs a lot of how i look at the work too i look at the world too it was the cbsi that <laughs> yes the eye <laughs> yeah he did the eye yes he did yeah. 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 Okay. all right okay so my, the idea is i'm gonna ask you six questions that i'm asking uh, all, all of you and to answer what comes to mind oh boy without exp extending yourself in time maybe is that this all together is 60 seconds so Six, six, six questions and answers. Ten seconds. Okay. Per, and I'm gonna ask you some things that you have touched upon already. Okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm but, just yeah. letting you know I'm terrible at this, but go ahead. But <laughs> the, the is that editing. That's true. Yeah, that's true. So okay. Even if you need some time to think about it, but it, so tell me your name. How long have you lived in Ventura County, and why did you settle here? So Jasmine Delgado, <laughs> um, I've lived in Ventura County since 2016, and I settled here um, because I was hired <laughs> as a, first as an adjunct at Cal State Channel Islands in the art program, and then I applied for a tenure track position and, and received that tenure track position. So that's why I'm here. So, as an artist, what is the most important thing you are trying to communicate through your work? So I think the most important thing that I'm trying to communicate is, you know, wonder from the audience and just um, inspire them to ask questions. How do you define creativity? <laughs> <laughs> um, I def define creativity as the willingness to take risks and try things that haven't been tried before. And is creativity and innovation the same thing? Uh, I think there. Are, I think creativity and innovation are adjacent and maybe simultaneously sort of existing. So, kind of yes. <laughs> um, how does your art reflect who you are as a person? Oh, how does my art reflect who I am? Um, I think it's 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 everything that it's where I grew up. It's what I love, and it's how I love to make things. <laughs> so it's an entire embodiment of who I am, for sure. How does living in Ventura County fuel your creativity? 
I will say that living in Ventura County in terms of like just the landscape, like it's beautiful. Like I can go out and draw, you know, I can sit somewhere and just be inspired to draw nature. And I do do that too, by the way. <laughs> um, so it is very inspiring actually in terms of just the landscape and the environment being so close to the beach. And the last question would be, what vision do you have for the future? Oh, what vision do I have for the future? That's really broad because there's a lot. <laughs> I could go many different directions. Um, um, you know, I just, I want the world to be a safe and happy place to live. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, there's a lot going on and it's scary. And more, and if it's even, if we go more personally to your future oh. uh, professional as an artist, what would that be? Um, just keep making art, making signs, pushing myself, making bigger signs <laughs> or bigger quilts. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's it. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah, absolutely. If you didn't do art, <laughs> oh, if I didn't do art, what would I do? Um, that's hard because I would say teach, but I can't teach art if I don't do art. So I don't know. I don't, I've never pondered that question. That's so interesting. I have absolutely no idea. That's a perfect answer. Okay. <laughs> That's really interesting. No one's ever asked that question. So thank you.